Okay, welcome everyone to our show. This is uh, our second edition of Key People of Influence. Today we have a very special lady, or should I say ladies? Because <laughs> our guest is having her mom on the show as well. So Yay. today we're going to interview a fellow colleague of mine in the same industry, considered as my peers. She's actually my senior, although I look much older. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older, but she's more senior because she has been in this life for over 20 years. Uh, ever have ever been awarded best trainer in SIM in 2013? You know, you know how many trainers SIM have? Had, I think SIM once upon a time had 200 plus trainers, if I'm not wrong. So to get the best trainer overall award is amazing. So today, let's join me in welcoming my good friend Maxim Tio and. Woo mother so <laughs> hi to everyone hello andrew hello everybody is this my mother elizabeth say hello hello <laughs> my mom's right. pretending to be gentle <laughs> you know uh, i have proof okay i have proof that this was the photo that we have taken oh my gosh <laughs> all right so this was the lousy mobile phone days huh so you know, it was <laughs> by my poor mobile phone it was very dark so uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, like uh, six years ago, uh, mm. you were at Speakers Academy for APSS. Oh my gosh, where am I? Let me see. You oh, are, yeah. You are, yeah, you're next to the girl. Yeah. <laughs> very I just smart on my lap. <laughs> yeah, it's a very smart move to have uh, one person in front of you, though you look very small. <laughs> yes, I, I couldn't find myself to the point. <laughs> and, uh, and I think uh, at the beginning of 2015, you were uh, together with me and my book launch together with our oh. mutual friend, Kelvin Lun. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow, that yeah. was your book launch. <laughs> yeah, that was in the salon, actually. Huh? Yes, I remember. So, so of course, uh, we bumped with each other again in SIM uh, later that year. Oh. We were all teaching on the same day, and then we met another mutual friend. Mm, wow. I didn't yeah. realize we bump into each other so often over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I purposely, purposely go to one place and bump into you. <gasps> that is, this is your awesome oh, yeah. show. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, my like, performance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so uh, you want to know what role is she playing, right? Then you look at, uh, you look at the way um <laughs> she dressed. You know, you can roughly guess. Ah, uh, I was lucky to be in the third or fourth row. So. It's mm. awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your support and for remembering. <laughs> and yeah. and you want to catch her in action, you know. I, I think uh, I have also dig out one photograph. Uh, <gasps> I think in 2017, this is one high energy. Oh, Very wow. high energy. Very, very good training. Um, I, mm -hmm. And uh, she's trilingual, by the way. She can speak Cantonese, Mandarin, <laughs> and English. So Aww. I'm so scared myself. I haven't done a single training in Cantonese, no, even though I'm a Cantonese. I've done that. No, no, no. So it's uh, um, okay. 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 No, no chance yet. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 uh, you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you can speak English or Gongdong Wado Tak. Um, I just, oh, um, positive guy, I will never give up. I, I will always uh, go for it, you know, try my best and all that. I'm a warrior in a way. Yes, you are, mommy. Yes. <laughs> and um, I've been blessed and uh, I'm now well and healthy. Yeah. Thank oh, you, mommy. Yes. You are a warrior. <laughs> that is awesome, yeah. awesome. So, Maxim, we are here today to talk about your upcoming book. And mm. uh, yeah, this will be uh, really awesome. So, would you mind telling me, I'll show the first question. What is the name of your book first? Wow. 
Oh Before yeah. That, you your book? I'm so excited about the title because we had many rounds of brainstorm and it is, wait for it, wait for it, Secret Manual of the Sales Warrior. Yeah. So listen, a Secret Manual, manual of, the sales of the Sales Warrior. Yes. I wanted to call it the Mi Ji of the Sales Warrior, which is a Chinese word for secret manual. And for filing reasons, we have to title it in English. So on my book cover, you will see the warrior, which is a drawing of me holding on to a miti, which is a secret mm. medal. So that's how we got around it. I see, I see. You know, I'm so excited. I prepared everything, right? Except your book cover. But don't worry. I will find time <laughs> to show it somewhere. Uh, okay. in our show. So <laughs> don't worry. You. I'm so sorry. So what was the story behind this uh, uh, book title? Besides, your, besides all your research. Oh, yeah. Is it a like 20 years in the making thing? It was initially I had thought about calling it like golden nuggets of sales ideas and and I thought, no, that's so generic. And it was also in a, a time where I started thinking about writing and finally starting on my book. I've been thinking and thinking about it for 15 years or even more. And in my book, I have actually written, the person who keeps reminding me is oh, my mother here. Each time my mom sees me like, baby, have you, no, why don't you say it? What do you always say to me when you see me, mom? Baby, when are you going to start writing your book? <laughs> yeah. Then I'll be like, mommy, don't talk about it. I'm not ready. And that reminder. Oh, and so when I finally decided to write a book and my mom is such a warrior, as she has correctly put it just now. Because over the past decade, she due to health reasons, she was in and out of hospital, and she will mm. fight. She will fight every disease, and doctors say there's no hope. And my mom will just keep fighting. So we started using the word "she's a fighter." Then we thought mm. "fighter" sounds like just a soldier. And one day, I just warrior. told my mom, "You are a warrior." Warrior. So I thought, yeah, I'm writing about yeah. sales, and sales is one of the toughest job in the world. So instead of calling us just the salespeople, sales professionals, that's how the name came about, Sales Warrior. There you go. Wow. Sales Warrior, I really love it because really sales, every day, a lot of salespeople take the marketplace like a better feel. So a yeah. warrior, the warrior term is very apt. So assuming oh, yeah. uh, the book I heard will be launched sometime in August. And, that's correct. Uh, and what can readers expect from this book itself? Oh yeah. In fact, this book, although I call it Sales Warrior, is really for people who are not just selling products and services, but for people who are constantly selling ideas and concepts, which I call them affectionately the office warriors. Mm. So what you can take away from this book is the key, some of the key things. It starts from the first chapter on networking. So networking applies not just to people in the sales world, but to all of us in the office working to climb the corporate ladder. And mm. all the way to the final chapter on resilience, which is, especially as you just correctly put it, it is like a whole battlefield for sales. The mm. same thing in the office, we are constantly battling politics, in those situations, difficult customers, difficult colleagues. So all those concepts will share, will share with our readers on how mm. do you overcome resilience? And um, my book is not a typical just telling you concepts kind of a book. It is a very conversational style with mm. questions that most of us would have asked and my answers or response to it. So it will be a very easy mm. and fun read. Yeah, You know, mm. I, I had a privilege of getting the, the draft version of your book. It's almost mm. like near final. I had skimmed through certain chapters. Of course, it zoomed straight into personality typing, right? So yeah. you make it very simple and uh, in one chapter I talk about personality, but in every chapter you make it like a Q&A style. So it's like you pick up the most salient questions being asked by salespeople and you put it into the book and then you have the answers. So why, how, how do you decide to have that in a Q&A style? Oh yeah, I have to give credit to the re inspiration I had last year when I had the opportunity or privilege to be invited by our radio station 938 Live the news station and they, they connected with me and asked me to speak on one topic, which is managing difficult customers professionally. I teach mm. that in, as a course and they loved the way I shared the liveliness because news radio is usually like, my mind is like, yay. Mm. And they asked yeah. me, 
what other topics can you talk about? And I was like, oh, I can do, talk about a negotiation too. I can do this. And before I knew it, I gave like eight interviews. And that was last year. Wow. And when the year came to an end, I was thinking about writing my book. And then I thought about the wonderful experience I had in the interviews. I thought, why not put together all my wealth of experience into 12 chapters, like the 12 mm. apostles, 12 months in a year. And yes. each chapter would be like a short interview. Yeah. So that's how mm. the idea came about. Okay, so uh, I'm sure by listening to it, we are all very excited. And um, uh, I'm not sure whether you have any pre-launch plan, but I believe we do. Maybe next month we have something nearer to the date. But when is the official launch date? Oh, I can't wait to say it's a special date. Mommy, can you do the honours? On the 8th of August. Yes, and what day is the 8th of August? The day is my eldest grandson's birthday. Birthday. Oh, this grandson is my son. Yeah. It's uh, my son's birthday, 8th of August. Very yeah. auspicious, right? So 8-8, eight, eight, right? 8-8-2-0. Eight, eight, two, zero, two, zero. Wow. 0-8-0-8-2-0-2-0. Absolutely. You know, by, by the way, uh, I specialize in Enneagram. The 8 and 2 always uh, come together. But anyway, that's wow. story for today. Uh, so now that we are in, the, hopefully by then, right? Hopefully mm. by then, phase three of our circuit breaker easing will be on and we can have a proper launch. I really, mm. really love to be there. But, you know, every time I myself, I'm a three-time author, and every time when I look at somebody's book, um, I can see their absence into the book. I can mm. see themselves into the book, even though they are writing nonfiction, but the style they write and the examples they have uh, is somehow their personal story. So how much does this book reflect on who you are and what you represent? Oh, I'm so I'm so delighted that you asked this question because mm. if I have to give it a percentage, I will say mm. almost 100% of who wow. I am. And yeah. why I can say that partly is self-awareness. When I wrote it, I reminded myself to be as authentic and be as original as I would. Not the, I wrote it the way I would say it. So I uh, use the exact expressions like, oh, really? No way. No, I actually write it out. Mm. And I was reaffirmed with that because I uh, thank you for being one of my praises for my book. I invited another few other good friends, trusted partners. And the, some of the repeated comments were, Maxine, I felt you were reading or you were talking in front of me. When I was reading the book, it was like you were talking with me right away. So that reaffirmed my intention to have my book to reflect 100% of who I truly am. Wow. Hey, by the way, uh, if you are listening or, or uh, watching this live, uh, of course, there will be plenty of watch party later on. But if you have a question for Maxim, please feel free to comment. We love all your comments, whether you're watching it on uh, Candy Creation Publishing pages or key people influence page uh, we welcome you to put your comments i can see it and i will put it up so uh one of my friend christopher has actually posed a question so it's a very apt question so where can you get the book oh uh, thank you christopher. oh in fact uh, thank you christopher oh, for you being my first fan on this show <laughs> yes <laughs> I will be having some distribution through the bookstores, the main bookstores like Popular, and the bulk of it I will be doing direct delivery and through book launches. So Christopher, please add me on Facebook, just Maxine Teo, and we keep in touch just so that you don't have to pay the GSD. And I'll have special rates for you, ding, yeah. because you are a supporter. <laughs> yes. Very special rate because uh, just now Maxine said 100% of her is in the book. So when you read the book, uh, it's like reading a very elaborative Tinder profile. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Tinder, Tinder is a profile, yeah. app, huh? So uh, if you if you like what you read, you get to like what you see on the uh, blog. So uh, please <laughs> come and support and uh, and uh, look out for it. So uh, it's gonna be exciting. So if there's one key message to our listener for today, mm -hmm. what would that be? Wow, this is the succinct phrase hmm. that i would say is be a warrior okay, my wow. key message is be a warrior which is just don't let anything in life get you down especially this time right so mommy right say it too 
Be a warrior. Yay! I'm a warrior. You're a warrior too. <laughs> so everybody out there, be a warrior. Be a warrior. So um, I happened to get through your book and I selected a few of the very good nuggets. Oh, Oops. thank you. Oh, yeah, I, think, uh, I think my Facebook is coming up somewhere. Thank you. I want to say your mommy is so cute. Thank you. She's she likes gorgeous. Yes. So, <laughs> so, 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 this is one oh, that's quote. my quote. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Oh yes, that's my quote for networking. The chapter on networking: build your emotional currency, and you shall be wealthy in more ways that you can imagine. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I like um, this one. The oh, way yes. you affects the way you are perceived. Mm. And the way you're being perceived affects the way you are being treated. That's so Absolutely. true. In Chinese, in Cantonese, they say, Xinkin Lao Yi, how good yet. Do you understand that? This is right. This is right. This is right. Xinkin Lao Yi, how good yet. Thank you. Your dress and how you carry yourself. Yeah. That is the most important. Mm. Then they will know you later. But if you, you give them the first impression, a, a poor impression, uh, you, you misbehave yourself or something, then mm. people won't respect you after that. Mm. No? Yeah. That's, That's correct, so Mama. That's so true. Mm. Yeah. So, so once, again, once again, if you are listening, if you are watching now, please share this video and we will do plenty of uh, watch party later on. Uh, but it's really nice. There's so many nuggets. I don't know what to choose. Uh, I have this one. The way you start a conversation will directly affect how the relationship will turn out to be. So, oh, yeah. The art of small talk. Mm -hmm. the art of small. So I think I remember when we first know each other, initially we had one. We didn't know each other very well. And we had one, somehow we had one conversation in Holland Village. Uh, yes. Coffee. I many, remember many that. Years ago. I like eight years ago. Yeah, eight years. we were talking about branding, marketing, you know, mm. uh, and and, uh, and during those days, actually, I only been ten years in the you know in life. So that was my second year, and I don't know why am I giving advice to someone who has already doing that for ten years. So, yeah. but, but but we but we bump into each other every time, and uh, you know, most recently we had a project together, mm. and he just a very energetic person uh i remember when i when i did the live interview with you maxim uh, a friend was nearby and they look at it and say wow this person is really really uh a show a show stop but maybe she's still your show maybe she's so she's so energetic that you know uh all the reports will not be able to handle her okay <laughs> well this is the second time you know i and i just love it because this oh, is really what key, yeah, key people influence all about. Yes, now and you I, are the key. <laughs> now, thank now you. I'm going to ask you one question, right? Yeah, it's oh. out, it's out of your book, but I want to ask you, what do you think real influence is all about? That is a very deep question. Real influence, I think, real influence is when you can get someone else to do something that you want them to do. And they think that it is their own idea. Wow. That is, will be the true spirit of influence. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what? I was reminded of one quote that you have in a book, and this one sums mm -hmm. up. If you do what others are already doing, it is expected. It's normal, right? People expect you to do, you do. But if you can go beyond the norm, beyond, over and above, that is where you stand up. So I think, wow. really, I think all of us need to go beyond. You know, COVID is such a time where a lot of people either rest for 10 weeks mm. or a lot of people grow in 10 weeks more than what they did in 10 years i think oh, it's yeah. really awesome and uh it's really nice to have you in our show and really thank you very much for sharing uh, <laughs> to end off with uh is there any last word of advice for our reader any last motivation because you always get you always have something that you can motivate people so I'm going to squeeze something out of you now. <laughs> wow. Okay. I can always pull something out. I think the um, count your blessings. Yeah. Count your blessings. The fact that I have my mother here right beside me is a blessing. Mm. So 
we can complain about things that go wrong, but we forget to appreciate what we have. So my key message to everyone, appreciate the people around you, count your blessings. Wow, it's awesome. You know, before we go, I just want to uh, end up this interview with, uh, I did a research and uh, the last time you were on radio, you did a fantastic interview, a short snippet about etiquette. <laughs> All right, oh, and, <laughs> I, and I think uh, that can be applied to sales as well. That's exactly what it's all about. When I saw the clip, I downloaded it. I said, I must play this uh, as the parting shot. So if you allow me, on behalf of the whole crew, uh, I want to thank Maxim for being here and uh, a lovely mother. Yay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> then um i want to end off this interview with this short uh snippet of the video and then we have to say goodbye and i'll be out everyone that's all for this afternoon and thank you for watching so let's enjoy maxim's interview thank you andrew so there are two parts here as the host the simple rule is you never ever start talking shop and you are starting the meal. There's always some conversation starters, which we talked about in our previous show on the uh, out of small talk. Simple mm -hmm. conversations like, you know, the current situation, some business trends. So the simple rule is by the time you have finished your main course, about to start on your dessert. If there's no dessert, if you're about to start on your coffee or your tea, then you bring up the topic. And the simple way to do it with the three magic words. So example, I demonstrate you eating, and then the plate gets cleared. Stanley, by the way, and then you, da -da 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 -da. so the by the way is magical. Eh? Mm. The moment you sit, but you do it after the main course. But there are exceptions. There are some of the guests that where I'm the host, and they bring it up right at the start of the meal. The moment we sit down, hey, yeah, let's talk about, um, after we have ordered the food, while waiting for the food, let's talk about, um, the business proposal that you mentioned, if the guest brings it up first, by all means. You see, etiquette, which is a French word, which is madness, it is rude if you bring it up first. That means you were there really to talk about business. But if the guest brings it up first and they want to talk about it, you're not rude anymore. So by all means, there you go. Take the cue from the guest. If not, do it after your main course. Would it also be important to know how much time that your guest has set aside mm. for this meeting with you? Because if you know there's a lot more time, then okay, maybe I, I don't have to push it so early on, on the agenda at that meal. But uh, if it's, you know, one hour business lunch and your guests, you know, you're already making it through the end of your meal and the guest hasn't brought up uh, wanting <laughs> to talk about business. So you have to be the one, I guess. Oh, yes. In fact, let's take a few steps back. Huh? Just now I was addressing a general situation. So if you take a few steps back and the events, the, the meal event is dinner, for example. The client says, I can meet you at 7. And say, oh, what time do you need to rush back? Oh, no, I've got all night. So there you go. By all means, the entire meal, you avoid bringing it up. Unless the guest brings it up. And I have been in that situation, especially in China. Because during meals, they don't talk business at all. We just, oh, we just come back and you know, drink, drink, drink. And after the whole meal, when we go karaoke, we do a whole lot of things. And then when we are sober having coffee, then they start to talk shop. So in those situations, you, again, you wait for the guest, in this case, who seems to be taking his or her time. You don't need to rush it. And coming back to what you said just now, my suggestion were for the typical business lunches, which is about one hour at most, one and a half hours. 